big Bowser after singing Peaches, Peaches, Peaches that look like another word that he's singing. By the way, in this artwork, we are doing a fan art of Bowser. Heck yeah, huge dragon turtle, I don't know what. And in this artwork, I learned something gigantic, something that changed a little bit more the way I think when painting, and I think this is going to help you champs a lot. So let's get straight to the point. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. Let's go. The thing that I learned in this artwork is we think that we need to add the tails already in the beginning or already start doing the specific thing. No, the number one thing that we need to start doing is setting up the basic shape, the basic motion of the picture, the basic perspective that we're gonna see colors. As an example, the flames in the mouth are the number one thing. So I'm going to set up the light around the mouth first, then the light coming from the lava in the floor, as an example. We tend to think, no, we need to do everything at the same pace, at the same time time and with the same strength and no that, that's not it so what i started doing was pretty much after base colors i start setting up hey this is the light from the mouth this is the light from lower parts and then after that i started setting up even more light light and shadows light and shadows before any kind of detail if we understand clearly light and shadows details are going to become something much easier much more simple and faster in this artwork i was thinking damn i'm going to take so long doing the scales and then i fix it first all the light and shadows light and shadows and tada it was much easier adding texture on him because texture should not be something that you're dying all the time and going like day thousand something and i'm here still doing scales and balls or skin no 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 this this isn't the past okay this isn't the past we cannot be doing this anymore maybe 50 hours drying okay but 10,000. i don't think so so after adding light from flames, light from downwards, and then light from the side, also aka ring light, we have all the lights necessary to prosper and have a great piece. Literally three types of light, three, not even two, it's three. And after we have all of those lights, we gotta think, oh, okay, each place that light's coming from, it's my guide to know where the light's going to hit on my drawing. Where the light's going to, aha, uh -huh, I'm going to touch here, I'm going to touch here, 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 here. And that's the best part that you can practice how you understand light and shadows. That's how I practice light and shadows. By literally asking myself, light's coming from here. Where it's going to hit? Is it going to hit this place in the hand? No. Is it going to hit this other place in the hand? I can try it. And if I see that it doesn't make sense, I take it out, go back and try again, place by place. That's how you understand what is happening. Always questioning yourself and really entering your drawing. Like, does this really make sense? Or is it just something that I'm imagining in my head and I'm going all crazy over it and I really think this should go, but maybe this should not go here? So yeah, about the clouds in the background, people tend to think, at least me, myself, I used to think that I need to have a detailed background with everything extremely ultra rendered and with details at the same level of Bowser's head and no, the answer is no. And how do you make a scene that looks like everything is moving, everything is bringing the eyes of the audience into a specific place? That's right, making all of the ambient moving with blur and now the direction of each lines are guiding in to the face. That's what I did. I did the lava going to the direction of Bowser's face. I did the clouds in the direction of Bowser's face. I did the clouds in the background a little bit in the direction of Bowser's face. So yeah, everything going to one specific place to show, haha, look here, don't look other place. No, 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 don't you dare. Don't look into other places, just here. And then I start doing a little bit of texture. I start adding texture with color burn because I just love to burn colors. This became my new addiction using the mode on brush call it color burn this thing is amazing it makes me happy i love burning colors okay no question no further questions i just love burning colors and then i got to a point that i was burning too much the colors and they were getting too dark what i do to fix this what i could possibly do to fix this that's right curves my number one to to help me fix any kind of light but not only curves i was also started to set up my mind into thinking okay there are too many colors going on turn your brain off
off to colors and just think on gray levels. So that's the moment that I look at my piece thinking of gray levels. If I see a really dark color, I think mm, it's calling attention. If I see a middle gray, it's not calling so much attention. And if I see a very strong, bright color, it's calling attention. And the rules are, if it's calling too much attention, too much contrast, this part must be important. And if it, this is not important, this is going to get a fog. I like to call it a fog. Like in the hand, below the hand, like the area of the hip and leg of Bowser, I made it with some fog because I was like, hmm, you cannot be calling as much attention as the hand. The hand's like rah, and the leg's like, ee, you know. <laughs> so that's right. And I added so many layers of effects after fixing the gray levels, after fixing base colors. I added so, so many color dodge, soft light, screen. I don't even know what more. Maybe I tried some overlay. Yes, I do. I did use some overlay. And I don't go like only one color. I tried that with a purple color. I tried that with a yellow color. I always like to try different things. And I recommend you champs doing the same because this can help you save so much. And I'm serious about that. This can help you save a and there are places that colors really troll our eyes, like in the corners, on the upper left side and lower left side, on the clouds, the big clouds. If you just look quickly, this may look, oh, it's blue, but it's not blue. It's pretty much a kind of gray area. And whenever you have a scene that have a dominant color, in this case, red, warm tones, anything that is not so warm is going to look like a completely cool color, like a completely bluish tone. And it's not, that's how you throw minds of people, haha. -ha. So yeah, this was an amazing artwork. The number one thing that I learned, as I said in the beginning for your champs was, think first of light, and shadows. Think first of how everything is going and never forget what truly should receive attention, in other words, contrast, and what should not receive attention. Like the leg in the backward, back, back, in the back, leg in the back. That should not be receiving attention. So always ask yourself, should this have the spotlight or should you just be like, eh, whatever. There are some, some parts in your artwork that are going to be, eh, whatever, and other that are going to be like, oh, hey, darling, how are you doing? Oh, let me help you. I, 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 I would die for you. I do anything for you. It's pretty much that type of contrast that you gotta have in your artwork. So champs, what do you like the most in this artwork? What would you change on it? Comment down below. Don't forget to check out my link in the description for my all-in pack where you can learn art with me and also the full art process of my artworks, like this one of Bowser. Do you want it? I want it. Let's go and get it. Heck yeah, champ. Let's go. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. You're amazing, champ. Bye-bye.